I'm here with you not to show you how smart I am. I am not against any cellular phone company. And I'm not here to tell you, throw those phones away. I'm just here today to draw your attention to certain aspects of radiation which we may be overlooking. Today, I hope you realize two things. One, electromagnetic field radiation, EMFR radiation, can damage your health. And two, your cell phone is not a toy. The World Health Organization initially said there is no substantial proof. In 2011, the World Health Organization, it changed its stance. Now it says, possibly carcinogenic, class 2B. The cell phone is a fantastic piece of technology. Let's just look very briefly and simply at how it works. You dial a few numbers. Your cell phone, it shoots off radio wave beam to an antenna. That antenna further shoots off another radio wave beam to a switching center. The switching center just authenticates the call saying, OK, the call is coming from so-and-so number, looking for so-and-so number. Where is that number? and shoots off one more radio wave beam to another antenna, to another possibly antenna, which is closest to your cell phone, to the cell phone that you are calling. Let me show this to you in a graphic. Like this. Phone to antenna, to another antenna, and to the next phone that you want to call. You know, let me take you a little deeper into this. Have you ever thought you dial a few buttons and your friend in Australia picks up the phone? You talk in real time. There is not even a wire. How is this really happening? If you were to fly to Australia, it would take you two days. Your friend picks up your call in four seconds. Now think of the speed and the strength of that radio wave. How fast is it moving? Let's look at the radio waves. So what are these radio waves? Very simply, they're just waves in the air. These radio waves also exist in nature. Man figured out how to make them when he wants them. Technology powered by electricity, and you can generate a wave. Now, these waves can be gentle, like so. They can be a little higher frequency, and they can be even higher frequency. What I want you to pay attention to is this, that the radio waves that are used for cell phone use are closest in range to microwaves. You are familiar with a microwave oven? A lot of you may have it at home, yes? And you put your food in the microwave oven, it heats up the food. There is no fire. How is this happening? Simply this, it's technology, it's powered by electricity, and in that box, they are generating radio waves. These radio waves make the molecules of your food vibrate faster, thereby creating heat energy. Let me take you to your physics books. Do you remember air molecules loosely packed? 
Yes, liquids slightly more densely packed, but still have room to move. And then solids. The molecules are very tightly packed, back to back, not enough space to move. And that is why when you're heating your food, you may have noticed many times the curry heats up faster than the dish. You have a hot curry and a not so hot dish. That's because the molecules of the liquid vibrate faster, easily, and not so much in the solid. Do you also realize that you only heat your food for maybe a minute or two? What would happen to your food if you put it in the, in the microwave oven for 10 minutes? What would happen to your food if you put it in the, in the microwave oven for an hour? Also, when you use a microwave oven, they've given you guidelines. When you turn it on, um, close the door, step away. When it turns off, you pause a moment, open the door, then put your hand in. You do not just open the door and push your hand in right away. They also say pregnant women stay away. Now let's come back to the cell phone. The cell phone. Like we told you, the connection, so there's two parts to the story. One which is in your hand, the cell phone. Second is the antenna. Let's explore the antenna. In other parts of the world, they'd look different, but in our country, they look something like this. There. You have seen this site. Mushrooming on buildings, on slums, even on the highways. Now let me take you to a single antenna. That is an antenna. The white part, that's the antenna. Electricity going into it through wires and mounted on a tower. Now, if you see an antenna, if I'm the antenna, the white portion, directly in front of me, you are sitting in this line is where maximum radiation from the antenna would be. To the side, so people sitting here would get less radiation, but maximum here. Similarly, up and down would be less, but directly in front of me would be maximum. These antennas to maintain connectivity, contact, so that you can use your phone all the time, are radiating 24-7. 24-7 they are on. During peak hours, the cellular companies from their offices increase the power output to these antennas so that they radiate more to manage traffic. Now, what would happen to people who are living in close proximity to these mobile phone towers, antennas? Let me give you an example. We are having a party here, a great time, music is going on. People in the guest rooms of the Taj say, hey, you're having a good time, but we can't hear the music. Uh, we want to join in the party too, over there. What do we do here? We turn up the volume of the music so that they can hear it over there. But what happens to all of us who are in this room? We would go deaf. Let us now explore the cell phone, which is in our hands. How does this little thing work? It's powered by battery. And every 60 seconds, it sends out a radio wave beam to the closest antenna to say, I'm here, 
I'm here. So that the contact remains, the antenna knows where to find this number if it needs to. I just want to tell you that when we were checking these, the radio waves, we realized that phones with Wi-Fi are radiating even more because they're constantly downloading data. So all those with Blackberries and having your Wi-Fi is on, please be careful. Have you ever noticed when you make a long call that your ears get warm? Yes? It is the same microwave effect. Your ears, soft tissues, earlobes, blood vessels, fine nerves going to the brain, um, the liquid which balances you, very, very vital for your balance, just here. Your eardrums, fine, thin membrane. Every time you have that phone here, what are you doing to all this tissue? You're cooking it. And you know what? You're taking that phone and cooking it again when the next call comes. You aren't, <laughs> you're not even being kind and saying, OK, one time I'm going to cook this year, and the next time I'm going to cook this year. What do we do? We cook the same year again and again and again. God is giving and forgiving. Every time you are heating this whole area, when you give it rest, it bounces back. It repairs itself. What about the day when it refuses to do that because it has been abused too much? Incidentally, we are the educated lot, and we should be reading everything. How many of us have read the Blackberry Manual? None of us. You have. You have. Did you notice that it is written there, hold the Blackberry 15 millimeters, 0.59 inches away from your ear? But how many of us are doing that? We're sticking it close. To oh, you are. You should be up here and I should be down there. <laughs> That's wonderful. That's wonderful. That's just what I will be eventually coming to. The ICNIRP, International Commission on Non-Ionizing Radiation Protection, the guidelines of which we all pay attention to. It says six minutes per day for cell phone use. Yes, <laughs> room for thought. <laughs> All right. Mm. Let me take you to one other area. Do you know um, children, babies, when they are born, they're born with soft, thin skulls. And as they develop, the skulls become thicker and harder. And when we are adults, they have formed, developed into a thick sheet almost like a, they say, a cement sheet, which um, protects the brain, the master computer of our existence. Now, you have very often seen, you know, people say, mummies, baby, speak to papa, speak to uncle, speak to auntie, and stick a phone next to the, the child's ear. What do you think happens? Those radio waves, they travel through the brain of the child. It is said, a minute on that phone affects the concentration of the child for the next one hour. You very often see iPads. This was a point Swatiji said, you have to say this. Now children are playing on iPads. They're playing their games. It would be very good to just switch the mode off, the connection to the antenna, switch that off, put it on airplane mode, and then the child plays the game, it's fine. But please be careful the next time you see a child, you know, take the necessary action. 
Today, what is worrisome is we have lived our lives, but what about the children and the grandchildren who we're bringing into this world, who are growing up in this world surrounded now by radiation? About a hundred years ago, there was maybe one or two people, the elite, the rich, who could smoke, who could afford a cigar. They smoked. Years down the line, 40, 50 years down the line, suddenly companies started to make cigarettes more affordable to the masses, and people started to smoke. One to the other, one to the other, it became a fashion statement. Business grew by leaps and bounds. Every advertisement you saw was cigarette smoking and how hip it was. Every hoarding you saw had a cigarette packet. Around that time, maybe one tiny little voice said, something is not right about this. And that voice was snuffed out. More years, years went by, and the voices started to grow. That all is not right about this. Slowly the voices grew. Ten years ago, about approximately, the government banned smoking in public places. Now it says smoking kills, and you have the most gross advertisements to show you that. Twenty years ago, there was maybe one or two people in a hundred who had a cell phone. Today, in a gathering of a hundred, we will have 150 phones. So many of us have double phones. So here I want to remind you again, World Health Organization initially said, no substantial proof. Today it says, classified as possibly carcinogenic, class 2B. Look into the future and maybe you know what may be coming. So I want to again reiterate, this is a fantastic tool. It is a fantastic piece of technology. But it must be used with care. It must be used with restraint. Let me end by reminding you, use it to your advantage. Don't let the cell phone consume you. Don't let this technology consume you. Just remember, electromagnetic field radiation can damage your health, and your cell phone is not a toy. Thank you.